Hey, hey, hello, I'm Kråkan, also known as Corvus Cornix, so welcome to Jack, yet another Crowcast, where I pick a game I played for a week and then I talk about it. This week's game is Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge for the Game Boy, it was released in 1992, and the way I played it this week was on the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. So this game was developed by Konami and also published by them, and also there'll be spoilers up ahead just so you know, but first a little backstory. So last week I mentioned that I might check out the other Castlevania titles for the Game Boy, and that's exactly what I did. So as you start out the game, you get the Konami logo and the main title screen, and then you get a text scroll explaining the plot. And the plot is basic, so Dracula was defeated by Christopher Belmont from the previous Game Boy title, and 15 years later, however, Dracula returns and kidnaps his son, Solier. And it's kind of weird because in the wiki page they spell the name one way, and in the opening credits they say something else. But I'm gonna go with Solier anyway. So the son is kidnapped and Dracula turns him into a demon and, well, Christopher is out to set things straight. And then you get the option of starting a new game or putting in a password. And the password system consists of four squares with different combinations of hearts, candles, eyes and uh, a blank, well, blank space, yeah. And then you have the stage select, so you can select between four different castles. So I started in the top uh, left with the crystal castle. And these castles can be played in any order that you like. So this game is like any other Castlevania, you have a scoreboard, you have a timer, you have hearts, and you have rests, which I think are continues, then you have the player's health and a boss health. So at the beginning of the Crystal Castle you have currents that push you around, and you can jump on platforms, and those are breakable, and I assume they will be made out of crystals. And just like the previous titles, by whipping candles you get whip upgrades, 1, to 3, and on the third level you get a fireball shooting out of the um, whip itself. And you can use heart in this game, so you have sub-weapons, you can pick up coins for score, and there are a lot of rope climbing, but somehow this game feels better than the original. It's a little bit smoother in every way, actually. So during the first level I found by mistake a hidden room, so it's just like the previous game, you climb up a set of ropes beyond the point where you're not supposed to go, and I found some hidden goodies. And the enemies of these levels are crows, mermen, bats, eyeballs, armors, and sock puppets. And the sub-weapons that I encounter in this level were the axe and the holy water. Uh, I don't know if there are any more weapons actually. There's also spike wall segments with the wall moving forward and backward. And here's a mechanic that actually is really interesting. You can actually slide down ropes. It's actually necessary to beat the spike wall and progress. And beyond the spike wall there are some choices they can make in the levels. Uh, but they eventually lead to the boss anyway. And the boss of this level is a robed character shooting in stormy clouds and you avoid the thunder and lightning and whip him when he's vulnerable. And then it's time for the plant castle. And the plant castle has plants in the background that are reminiscent of H.R. Giger's alien-like illustrations, if that makes sense. And there are a lot of rope climbing and actually skeletons on ropes, which was kind of cool and interesting. And then later in the level, you can choose between a top and a bottom path. And uh, yeah, it's just the, the idea of having a choice is good, I guess. Uh, and then there's a flood of eyeballs, and the boss of this level is, or are, two minotaurs stuck to a cliff, and you avoid their attacks and beat them with the whip. And the enemies of this level are frogs, bats, rolling eyeballs, sock puppets, <laughs> manats flying around, and also there are some, uh, some uh, mud men. And then it's time for the rock castle, and I like the design of it here because they have a lot of stone walls, so it's uh, basically a stone keep with spikes shooting out of the walls and a lot of precise jumping. And the enemies of this level are mudmen, bats and frogs jumping out of the walls and the boss is an armored dude and halfway through the battle he grows out a head which is super weird. And then it's time for the cloud castle and the enemies of this level are bats, knight armors and sock puppets and a lot of platform with ropes and spikes at the bottom of pits and stuff like that. And the boss of this level is a skeleton wall that spits projectiles, it's a really cool concept. And once you've beaten all the four castles, Castle Dracula will rise from the ground and you're forced to do the same thing that you've been doing previously in the other levels. So this is where I put down the controller, um, but I made note of the game anyway. So they're halfway through this stretch, and it's a long stretch by the way, you fight a, a skeleton dragon, which is kind of a cool thing. It's something out of a Metroid, you know, popping in and out of the walls. And then you're forced to fight your son. Um, to, I guess, purify him or set him straight. So meanwhile, this is playing, uh, a straight up Bach plays is played on the, um, the hardware, but think Game Boy, and then you're up for a, a rough start. It's like, oh, this is Bach, but it doesn't suit the Game Boy really well. 
And after the battle, you're off to the final stage. There's a long bridge area with skeleton statues holding scythe. And the boss is, of course, Dracula. So he teleports around the stage and throws orbs. So there's a specific safe spot you can stand depending on where he is. And uh, once you beat him, the castle crumbles and Christopher and his son is watching it from a cliff. And then there's the slowest <laughs> text scroll in the history of a man, but I watched it. So Dracula was defeated and uh, the war ended and there is peace. And uh, that's it. But the text scroll is so <laughs> slow. It's like one frame a second, not even that, it seems. But then the staff rolls and that's the end of the game. So, gameplay. Christopher Belmont is set on an adventure, yet again to stop Dracula and save his son. Control, the d-pad is movement, square and circle is jump, triangle and x is whip, start pauses, and L2 brings up the, uh, the, uh, the important menu where you can save and stuff. And if you push up on the d-pad and the attack button, you use the sub-weapon. And these buttons, just as the previous game on the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, can be changed to any button configuration. Graphics. I realized early in this week that I can go into the options menu and change the theme. So you don't have to look at a black and white screen all the time. You can actually change to more comfortable colors. I prefer the red, orange and black combination. You can also change it to the classical Game Boy, which is this dotted green matrix effect. And I really like it. You can add scan lines and change the ratios and stuff like that as well. Sound and music. Hidehiro. Funushi made the tracks for this game, except for one of them. So he was one of the original composers of the previous game as well. So I like the Cloud Castle theme, I like Solier's Room theme, and a bunch of others. There's actually not a bad track at all. But getting through the fight between Christopher and his son, Bach is playing straight Bach, that doesn't suit the original Game Boy's color palette, or I should say sound palette, that makes sense. But otherwise, it's not bad. Easter egg seekers and glitches. So just like the previous title, you can find things like hidden rooms with hidden goodies, and uh, you climb up ropes and stuff, and you find these hidden rooms. I also watched a tool assisted speed run by Shrimpen, and uh, it took him 21 minutes and 41 seconds to beat the game, which is just crazy. But it's, it was tool assisted, so it wasn't completely made by a human. So in conclusion, I wrote, yes, try it, but be prepared. So this game is better than the original in every kind of way. The music, the gameplay, the graphics. It even has a password system, so it's not punishing at all. And if you die at any point, you mostly start at the same screen where you died, unlike the predecessor. However, this game needs uh, a lot of patience. Uh, I just like to rush in, and that's not the approach you're supposed to have to this kind of game. So it's a bit sluggish, but and it's also so from the you know classical knockback that Castlevania games have, but it's perfectly playable, I think. Um, would would I recommend it for someone to play today? No, but if you have the collection, you might as well try it. Uh, anyway, thanks for listening and for watching, and take care.